So hello and good afternoon. A very, very happy Independence Day to each one of you and a very, very warm welcome to the Ultimate Health Quiz with Sharon. My name is Vinita and I am your host for today. Uh, Shalini and Shraddha will be helping me today. We are all part of the Sharon team. Sharon is an acronym that stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. Our founder's name is Dr. Nandita Shah and our mission is to empower you to reach your highest health potential. So on this Independence Day, I would love to know from you, what does independence mean for you? If you can type in the chat box. Freedom, thank you. Yes, Lena, freedom, being free, right? Free from diseases, Pooja, that's wonderful. Independence from medicines, absolutely, Harish. Free from diseases, free from COVID, <laughs> yes. We all want to be free, right? We want good health, Asneem, that's right. Free from stress as well. Oneness, that's beautiful. Free from fear. Yes, Manju, freedom from diseases and doctors. Yes, I agree with all of you. I think for me too, that freedom means being free from medicine, being free from diseases. And do you think all of this is possible? Can we have a world without diseases? We, we don't have to be dependent on medicines. Yes, it's absolutely possible, right? And today, Rena will be, uh, will be talking about that. And, uh, but before, yes, to stay healthy, yeah. So uh, thank you everybody for that, yes. Um, but yeah, so I hope you all are ready because I can see that you all understand that staying healthy is so important. It's so important to be disease free. Um, and you all are ready for the quiz, I think already. But before we get into any exam, I think it's good to do a revision, right? So I'd like to welcome Rena Rupani, who is going to go through uh, the revision with us. Uh, we're, we're all excited about the quiz because we've all worked very hard on this. And um, Rena will be sharing, um, sharing all that you need to know and all that you need to know about the quiz as well. So uh, let's welcome Rena. Uh, Rena has been a great mentor to all of us. We all look up to her and she is the mastermind behind all our wonderful events as well. So please welcome Rena. Um, over to you. Thank you, Vinita. Thank you for such a lovely introduction and happy Independence Day to everyone. And for us at Sharon, independence means free from medicine. And that's actually what got me into Sharon in the first place because I always wanted to live a life without medicines. And then you say, you know, uh, give it to the universe and the universe sends it to you. And Sharon came to my life because, you know, I would see my grandparents go to hospitals and as a child, I would say, I would always think, what do I do that I never have to go through these things? And now six years working with Sharon and listening to so many testimonials, listening to so many success stories, I can guarantee and tell you that this is possible. I say that Sharon is an acronym and it stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And the reason we are getting sick today is because we are disconnected to animals and nature. And that's what Sharon tries to do, to reconnect us back to animals and nature. And today is our fight for independence. What are we fighting for today? It's through for diseases. Corona right at the moment, but we are fighting with disease. And this is something that has been happening since quite a lot of time now. Let me tell you where we are. You know, India is home to nearly 40% of the world's heart failure patients. India is the diabetes capital of the world. It is the second largest rate of heart diseases in the world and third largest country in obesity. I really don't think these are any crowns that we can be very, very proud of. Okay, disease is rampant. 
hypertension, which is blood pressure, is on the rise among teens. Blood pressure in teenagers, apart from PCODs, apart from acne, apart from depression, okay? Cancer. Like if I met you guys maybe even 15 years ago and asked you, do you know somebody with cancer? I don't know how many of you would have raised your hand. Today I ask you, do you know somebody with cancer? Anita? Uh, yes. Yes, right? We know so many people with cancer. Isn't it surprising that most of us know somebody with cancer? That's how rampant has become. That's so much so that LIC has actually taken out a cancer insurance policy because it's so rampant and it's so expensive. And according to the World Health Organization, depression will be the second leading cause of death by 2020. Isn't it so? Isn't it happening? So diseases have actually become a household name. Every disease, I mean, every house has somebody who's got maybe a PCOD or a weight issue or a blood pressure issue or a thyroid issue or a depression issue. I mean, just let's start thinking about it. So who will be our Gandhiji? to lead us to freedom from disease. Do we have a Gandhiji? Is there one for this movement? There is. These are doctors who cure lifestyle diseases, not keep us on medication lifelong. Because if you have blood pressure, you're on lifelong medication. If you have diabetes, you're on lifelong medication. But there are doctors who reverse diseases. Let me show you some. We have Dr. Dean Ornish, who did extensive research on reversal of heart disease. We have Dr. Neil Bernard, who did on reversing diabetes. Dr. McDougall, who did on digestive issues. And the China study is the largest study on cancer and food and how there is a connection. These are some of the doctors from the West, but there are quite a few doctors now in India. And one of the pioneers of this movement in India was Dr. Nandita Shah, who started Sharan 15 years ago and has helped thousands and thousands and thousands of people reverse or prevent disease. She is um, also a best-selling author of the book, Reversing. I'm talking about reversing diabetes in 21 days. My own parents had diabetes and blood pressure. And my, they went for the 21-day health retreat and came back. And it's been, they were on 10 years of medication. It's been five years and they're on zero medication. So I know, I have seen that this works. Dr. Nandita has also been awarded the Nari Shakti Puruskar for the work that she's doing. This is the highest award for civilian women in our country. And it was given to her by our president. So can I become a freedom fighter for health? I can. And how can I become a freedom fighter for health? Is by eating my way to health. I did it. I had severe acidity. And this is how I looked six years ago. I did everything under the sun to lose weight, to get my acidity in control, but nothing helped. I was on medication. I said, okay, this is what life is going to be all about. But as I said, Sharon came along. I said, first I thought, no, 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 no. I can't do all these changes. But then I said, chalo, let's try. Any problem in trying. And I did it. Trust me, within three days, my acidity disappeared. And I lost 17 kilos of weight in eight months. Today, I have an 18-year-old daughter. We share our clothes. She hates it. I love it. Okay, so this is just one side effect of going on this diet. Are there any freedom fighters in our audience today who have eaten their way to health? Can you share what have you reversed? 
any freedom fighters for health in our session today? Uh, Rachna says yes. Renuka, yes. Can you say what changes have you made? Because that will inspire everyone. Rachna, what happened? What did you reverse? Deepti says PCOD. Uh, Aruna says she's on the way of reversing. Um, Saranya says she's reversed her varicose veins. Wonderful. Rajna says she stopped her diabetes medicine. Lovely. Uh, <laughs> yes. And many, many more are coming in. I have reversed like my knee, knee and back pain, Srinath says. Uh, Ratan says diabetes for my mother. Divya says I've reversed my weak body to a strong immune body. Um, Nandaji says that I'm helping people to get back to healthy diets. Kushbu says that she's, uh, not, uh, she's looking at reversing autoimmune and she's very positive. Renuka says she's reversing. Yeah, yeah, she's saying she's re trying to reverse her constipation. Mm. Will happen. Will happen. <laughs> Janvi so says, that, yeah, she's offering medicines. Yeah, so many, many more. There's, uh, it's just, it's, there's so many benefits and it's unbelievable that all of them um, are doing this through a healthy and um, going towards a medicine-free life, right? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Vanita, for sharing. And thank you to each one of you for sharing. Because when you share, it inspires others to give it a shot. Because if she can do it, I can do it. So I'm so happy to know that there are so many freedom fighters walking this path. So who is actually our enemy? Any idea? Who's our enemy? Who's the enemy of today's disease-filled world? Who's the enemy? Any uh, idea? So Renuka says medicines. Um, Archana says junk food. Saranya says us. Uh, Monica says junk food. Chetna says um, food again. Sarita says sugar. Ratan says big pharmaceuticals. Janvi says dairy. Lena says me and myself. Preeta says stress. <laughs> lovely. Thank you for being such a lovely and participative audience. The enemy, as two of you said, is our own choices. It's absolutely our own choices. There will be thousands of things which we are not supposed to be doing, but if we choose to do, it's our choice. Because good and bad will be there everywhere. But it's up to us to choose, right? But if we are the enemy, we can even defeat ourselves and become the winners and become the freedom fighters for our health. So let's start with understanding what is it that all of us who shared today have done to be on this path of wellness, well-being, recovery, healing, health, and happiness and joy. The three F's to freedom from disease, the three F's, which I'm gonna share with you today. The first F, freedom to health, is fat, okay? That is one of the main, actually the main cause of most lifestyle disease is fat. Let me, let me explain it to you in layman terms. We've been eating fat throughout our life and I'm gonna tell you what, where is the fat coming inside our body. The fat keeps clogging our arteries. And as it keeps clogging our arteries, slowly and steadily, the blood cannot flow through so easily. And when the blood cannot flow through so easily, we start getting health issues like diabetes, like hypertension, like heart issues, and many autoimmune diseases and many, many more. So what is, if we know the main cause of a disease, what do we have to do? Just remove it, right? So we have to remove the fat. Let me show you a little video. Atherosclerosis is a disease that affects all the arteries of the human body and which develops over time. It is characterized by the accumulation of fatty deposits on the lining of the arteries, which are called plaques of atherosclerosis. These plaques cause a narrowing of the arteries. When atherosclerosis affects the coronary arteries, it's known as coronary disease. You saw? How that yellow thing, the yellow thing is the fat which gets into our, into our veins. And I remember when I showed this video to Dr. Nandita, she said, you know, the, the arteries that they're showing of a 60-year-old, I'm seeing of a 30-year-old in today's times. 
she started being a doctor years ago and she said i would only see patients who were 50 55 60 plus and today i see patients as young as 16 something has changed our choices have changed so what is or where is the fat coming into our system the first thing when we cook our food is we put oil in our food and oil is pure fat and zero fiber absolutely no fibers look at have a look at the can you see fat this is the nutrition facts of oil there is only fat in it there is nothing else no carbohydrate no protein no vitamins calcium nothing so when we start cooking our food the first thing we put fat now it's not that we don't need fat our body needs a certain amount of good fat which we will get when we eating peanuts when we eating our mustard seeds when we are eating our coconut in the whole form so we are getting the fat in the whole form it doesn't need to be refined heated treated and then given to us so the first f that we need to remove is the oil in our diet and all of us at sharan who are following the sharan lifestyle do all our cooking with without oil and we even have our samosas and pakoras and patata varas without oil that's why today there is an oven to be won because everything that we are giving away as prizes are things that we ourselves use okay second thing which contains fat is processed foods packaged and processed foods did you know that the toxins which come from preservatives in our food pesticides in our vegetables and fruits microwaved foods plastic and air actually stick to your fatty tissues in your body and don't allow the fat to budge out so suppose you're eating everything healthy and then you're eating non organic you're eating packaged food you will not reduce your fat because they the toxins don't allow the fat to budge out from your body so the first thing to remove is oil and the second thing to remove is packaged and processed foods what is the third thing which is full of fat but before that let me ask you why were the british interested in india any idea why were the british interested in india um priya says spice kumar says spices mega says cotton Neel, okay. neela says spices uh, for our diversity uh, right. because we are the most prosperous and rich country um, yeah so, yeah so basically they were after money isn't it that's why they came to india what interest the processed food manufacturers money what interest farmers who use chemicals do you know that farmers i have spoken to farmers who farm for themselves separately without the pesticides and what they sell to us is with the pesticides because they know how harmful it is and it's all a money game and we are falling into the trap again so the first movement that we have to join when we start this freedom to health walk or fight is the boycott junk food movement boycott all the junk food today go to your home take all the junk and throw it don't even give it to anybody because i rather not spend to the doctor and throw away all this can you do that can you join the boycott junk food movement today i hope most of you can and trust me the best thing is it's not out there in the house you will not eat it right so start thinking if you want health you need to change certain things so we have covered oil we have covered packaged food the third thing which has a lot of fat is meat meat is pure fat high protein and zero fiber okay what is what do a meat fish eggs contain the first thing is fats the main cause of diseases i'm sure those people who left leave meat for a while can feel the difference in their body you feel lighter i know a lot of people who do this fasting and then they don't have any meat for those 30 days 40 days suddenly feel so light because there is so much fat which is consumed when they're having meat fish and eggs these apart from the fat what do we get we get antibiotics 
do you know that most of the antibiotics that are produced in the world are fed to farmed animals? And that's why we've become such a highly uh, antibiotic resistant uh, generation today. And then what that meat, fish and egg has eaten, or meat and fish has eaten, comes back to us. Because what that person, what that animal has eaten will come to us. And they are not eating beautiful, fresh, organic produce, right? They're eating other animals. Do you know that the uh, mad cow disease happened because male calves were churned and fed to the females and that's how mad cow disease happened. They're fed with growth hormones. An average chicken looks so big is because it's fed with growth hormones. They're, they're made to grow faster than they're supposed to. Then this is very, very important to me. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Tell me, anybody here ever tried to catch a cockroach? Have you tried to catch a cockroach? Have you ever tried to catch a cockroach? Yes, Pyle says yes, Taranya yes. says yes, yes. <laughs> right, of course. Is it easy to catch a cockroach? No. Is it easy? Everybody no. saying no, yes. No. That means, does the cockroach know it's in danger? Yes. Richa says yes. Yes, the cockroach that. knows it's in danger. Forget a cockroach, even an ant knows it's in danger. So if an ant and a cockroach know they're in danger, won't a hen and a lamb and a pig and a cow know they are in danger? When we are in danger, we produce a hormone called adrenaline. It's a stress hormone. And when they're going for slaughter, the stress hormone is at the peak. And when we eat them, we are also consuming their stress. Does that make sense? I'm sure people who were non-vegetarian and became vegetarian, I was a non-vegetarian. And when I became a vegetarian, I 100% notice a difference in my stress levels. Anybody here who has felt that? I have personally. Um, Janvi says yes. Uh, Arjuna says yes. Ekta, yes. A lot of people have saying yes. Yeah. Yes, right? So when we are eating meat, fish and eggs, we are also consuming stress and stress is one of the biggest reasons of lifestyle diseases as well. And of course, disease that I spoke to you about. Okay, so now how am I going to get my protein, right? Because a lot of people eat meat for protein, isn't it? So no meat, no eggs, how do I get my protein? Can I ask you another question? Anybody here has ever heard of anybody having a protein deficiency? Protein deficiency. Everyone saying no. Sushma, Saranya, no. no. Right. Okay. Have you heard of people having protein excess issues? Uric acid, gout, kidney yes. stone. Yes. Yes. So that means there is no such thing as protein deficiency. In fact, we are having excess of protein when we are consuming animal proteins because animal proteins are very difficult to digest. So where do we get the protein in the plant-based kingdom? Tell me, we talk about horsepower, right? Horse and cars with horsepower. Where does the horse get its protein from? What does the horse eat? Uh, so a lot of people are saying grass, chana dal, lentils. Absolutely, that's where we get our protein from. From nuts and seeds and legumes and whole grains. We don't need to worry about excess protein. I'm sure we're eating most of this anyway in our diet. Even every vegetable and fruit has a certain amount of protein. You do not need to worry about your protein at all when you go and surrender to Mother Nature and her produce. So we spoke about, and okay, what about no fish? How do I get my omega-3? First of all, if you stop oil, you don't need to worry about your omega-3. But otherwise, you just add these in your diets, like walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, and it's taken care of, okay? So what are the three things that we need to talk, think about as far as fat is concerned is oil, processed and packaged foods, and meat. But do you know a large amount of fat that comes into our diet comes from milk. Milk is pure fat, high protein, and no fiber. That is why vegetarians and non-vegetarians 
get the same disease because milk and meat is exactly the same. I'm going to ask you another question now. When does a cow start giving milk? When does a cow start giving milk? Upon birthing, says Vipin. Uh, Vanishka says when pregnant. Uh, when lactating, says Megha. When pregnant. Correct. Yeah. When they deliver a baby. Right? That's the time nature gives the milk. For whom? For the baby cow. Okay? But now, let me take you. Because even I was not aware. Okay? And we learned. So the ba male baby is born. Male baby, no use for the dairy industry. Tied up and left to starve to death so that it can be uh, sent as meat, cut as meat and leather. In fact, India is the largest exporter of beef in the world. Female calf, we need her. So little she's allowed to have milk and then she's removed and then the rest is taken away by us. Now, how does the cow become pregnant? So obviously, they're not going to wait for the, it's all a money game, right? They're not going to wait for the cow and the bull to mate and then she's going to get pregnant. So basically, they artificially inseminate her. In other words, they rape her. They make her pregnant. They take the baby away, take the milk away. And then they want her to get pregnant again because she's just a milk making machine for them. So she's raped again. So she's lactating and pregnant at the same time. Now, I see a lot of women in the audience today. If you're not feeding your baby, if your baby doesn't suckle on you, what will happen to your milk? Can anybody answer? What happens to the milk if the baby is not suckling on you? Your milk production stops, says John V. Right. Yeah, it will stop. Absolutely. Absolutely dry up. That's natural. It's common sense, right? How come the cow is giving so much milk? Because she's fed with injections, which, which are chemicals, so that she produces more and more milk. Again, I see a lot of women here. I remember when I had delivered my daughter, I was told no medicines, no antibiotics, nothing, because it will go into the milk and go into the baby. Am I right? Correct? So whatever is injected into that cow goes into the milk and comes back to us. That is why the moment you stop dairy, you will start seeing huge differences in your health. Okay, how do they remove the milk? With machines. And the machines are many times left there. There is pus, there is bacteria, there is blood goes into the milk and comes to us. In Canada, somebody told me that if they get blood-filled milk, they put chocolate and sell it as chocolate milk. Okay? So when you're drinking milk, you're also drinking pus, <coughs> bacteria, antibiotics which is fed to the cow to treat this pus, Pesticides, because what the mother eats affect the quality of the milk, affects the baby. We were said, don't even have chana, because if you have chana, the baby will get gas. Right? Am I right? Can you see that? Urea. Urea is something which is put, which is a fertilizer, and it is put into the milk so that the milk doesn't coagulate. So when you're having a glass of milk, you're having the pain of the mother, the pus, the bacteria, the antibiotics, the pesticides, the urea, the growth hormones, and all the toxic substances. Remember, they stick to your fat and don't allow it to budge from plastic. So we really do not need to have milk, but we don't miss out on anything. We have our cheese and our ice creams and our cookies and our dahi and our chas curry, everything, but with plant-based milk. That's why today you also have a chance to win a delicious feta cheese, which I have tried and it's really delicious. Just to let you know that everything is possible when you go on this lifestyle. No milk, how do I get my calcium? Lots of sources. See, human breast milk is 33 milligrams of calcium. That's why nature only wanted us to have that much calcium. We don't need more than that. 
you know, we grow maximum in that first year when we are born. Look at sesame seeds, 1,160 milligrams of calcium. Look at tofu, almonds. This is a very small list. There's a huge list. Spinach, hazelnuts, everything has calcium. And do you know cow's milk actually doesn't give us calcium? It removes the calcium from our bones because our body is alkaline. And cow's milk is acidic. And when we put acid in our body, our body wants to come back to its state of alkalinity. So the milk, the calcium is leached from the bones. Okay, and as some of you said your knee pains, everything is gone. I know people whose arthritis and osteoporosis have been relieved just by stopping cow's milk. I'm going to show you one video. Um, it's a very touching video and please watch it. It's really worth watching it. Thank you. सही मायनों में जानवर वो खुद इंसान है किसी का हक नहीं बनता किसी की भी जान से खेलने का भले वो जान एक छोटी सी चींटी की हो या फिर किसी बड़े से हाथी की कोई तुझको काटेगा तो कैसा तुझको लगेगा तुझको जलते अंगारों पे जब कोई सेकेगा They are also seeking freedom. <clears throat> will we be our, Will we be there, Gandhi? Can we? So the next movement that we have to join is the Satyagraha movement, the movement of ahimsa, the movement of compassion. When you be a compassionate person, nature will take care of you. Take care of her beings. And trust us, you will be taken care of. And somebody who doesn't consume anything which comes from an animal is a vegan. Vegan is everywhere. It's not a fad. It is not something which is in fashion. It's the reality. And we need to start understanding why. If you feel like having chicken, have jackfruit curry. Soy curry for mutton. 
yam curry for fish. All the alternatives are there. We don't need to hurt anybody to have these. Just for our two-minute taste. Tofu omelets can be made. Burjis can be made. Our basic Indian meal is vegan. Rice, roti, sabzi, dal. If you know how to make curd, you can make the wara, everything. South Indian meals are vegan. You can make curd rice. Oriental meals actually have tofu. It's Indians who use paneer, but tofu tastes excellent. And in fact, we have mastered the art of making tofu taste so much like paneer. If you know how to make cheese, Mexican can be veganized. Italian can be veganized. Desserts can be veganized. Cakes, cookies, chocolates. That's why we call this a diet of celebration, not a diet of deprivation. Because nature loves us and always wants to give the best to her children. But if the children are not going to listen and do something else, well, she wakes us up through disease. Let's not even get there. These are some vegans. Some current ones. These are all sports personalities. So energy is never an issue when you go on this diet. I'm sure most of you who are following this path can vouch for it. Yes, let's listen to what Virat has so to say. So how did you go about changing your diet? Well, I figured out a lot of things myself, things that felt right to eat. And you, you know when you eat something, whether it's healthy for you or not. So I never approached a nutritionist. I thought, okay, fine. I know the things that are not healthy, not good for you to eat. And I'm going to figure my way out myself to lose weight first. And then I went so extreme that I had to meet someone um, because I got so lean at the end of it that, um, you know, I felt like this, there's something wrong. I need to probably speak to someone. And So what did you do? Of, yeah, you so um, I kept eating boiled food. I kept eating stuff that had no oil. Nothing. I was eating steamed vegetables and I got so, so thin that I started feeling weak at the point. You know, I got so mad about it, but then I had to strike a right balance and then my trainer helped me to speak to someone and then get my diet right. And like, how did it uh, change you? So, in the World Cup just now that we played, every game my energy was 120%. And my recovery was so fast, I could, like, we traveled the next day after every game, after a full hectic game, my average uh, distance covered in a game was 15 kilometers. And I would just come back, do my recovery treatments, travel the next day to another place. And as soon as we reached there, I was ready to train again. And I just couldn't believe it. I was like, I have so much energy. I can do gym sessions in between. I can do 10 games in such a short span of time with each game at high intensity. And I never experienced anything like that before. I had no stiffness in my body. I had no niggles, I had no problems in recovering, no stomach issues, nothing at all then. I was off dairy as well, um, you know, raw dairy um, and meat. And I was like, this is unbelievable. I could never imagine that changing my diet would help me in such a massive way. And you don't have to be on steamed and boiled food. We eat everything with love and we enjoy it, but without all these things, okay? So the first F to our health was, can anybody answer? Um, Vanchika says fat, Nidhi fat, Divya says fat. Um, everybody's listening. <laughs> yeah. So fat, remove it. The second F. Now suppose you were doing Diwali Safai. Diwali is coming hopefully soon. Uh, not hopefully, it will be coming soon. And you want to do Diwali Safai. So what is the first thing you start doing? Stop put getting new things, right? Because you want everything to be cleaned up first. But, and then second thing what you do is clean up the existing dirt which is there. So now the existing fat which is there in our body, how do we remove that? Chalo, abhi dalenge to nahi. We're not putting new fat in our body. But what, how, what do we do about the existing fat? And that's where our broom comes in. Fiber. Add it. Okay, what does fiber do? Fiber acts as a broom. And you saw all that yellow thing which is stuck in your arteries. It will start cleansing it. It will start cleansing it. And now you're not having packaged food. So the fat will easily budge. Right? So it starts cleansing it. So where do we get our fiber from? Where can we get this broom from? Fruits. Fruits are full of fiber. 
Mother Nature never gives us anything which is not good for us. Like our mothers. Will our mothers ever give us anything which is not good for us? Vegetables, salads are full of fiber. Green smoothies. This is something that we recommend that we have every single day in the morning. Are full of fiber. Whole foods. What do I mean by whole foods? Vegetables and fruits with skin because maximum nutrition is under the skin. Greens, whole wheat, whole rolled oats, millets, brown rice, red rice, black rice, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds, so many things that you can actually eat. What about cookware? We recommend, highly recommend only using stainless steel, cast iron for our dosas and chillas and clayware if you can manage it. Otherwise, most of our houses, we are using stainless steel. So the next movement that we have to join is the Swadeshi movement. We have to buy local and eat organic. Okay, so if you want to walk to this path of freedom from disease, then you need to start the boycott junk food movement, the Ahimsa movement, the Satyagra movement, and the Swadeshi movement. The third F to health. So first F was fat. What was the second F? Second F? Fiber, fiber, fiber. Fiber, wonderful. And the third F to health is fitness. You eat right, but you don't exercise. It's not going to work. You have to do it. Like if you have a car, this body is like our car. And if I'm not moving it, I'll have to pay for it. So the car has to be moved. This body has to be moved. Now, fitness is divided into two sections. First section is phys okay. physical fitness is very important. Please don't tell me you don't have the time because you have time for Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. You have time for exercise. Okay, and this is your Dandi March. This is what we need to do. And the second F in fitness is mental fitness. I cannot, cannot, cannot tell you how important this is. Because if you're eating right and you're exercising, but you're not taking care of your thoughts and your attitude and your perspective towards life, it's not going to work. So all these pillars are important. And if you start thinking right, if your attitude is right, automatically you will uh, eat right and you will exercise. Actually, all are connected. Many times, a lot of people I know who have started on the whole food plant-based diet that Sharon recommends, start seeing a clarity in their thinking and find a lot of men, uh, spiritual growth as well. So it's all connected. Because we are what we eat, right? So in mental fitness, we have to join the non-cooperation movement with our own mind. So the mind will say, I want to have that samosa today, but I'm not going to cooperate. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to go home and make an oil-free one. I don't know how to make an oil-free one. I will check the Sharon website where we have so many recipes, over 500 recipes. YouTube channel where we have so many recipes or I'll join a cooking class and learn everything. So start the non-cooperation movement with your very own mind. Sharon has a five point plan to health. You don't need to even meet us again. There are many people who just visit our website, YouTube channel, free talks, make the changes, experience the changes and sometimes even write to us that these are what we have. So learn this and you're good to go. Plant-based, nothing which comes from an animal, organic and whole, of packaged and processed foods. The only two supplements that you need to take care of is vitamin D and B12 because those cannot be supplemented. Otherwise, nature takes care of everything. And I'm telling you, vitamin D and B12 is for every diet, whether you're a vegetarian, non-vegetarian, vegan, non-vegan, whatever. Vitamin D and B12 is a must. And the freedom from diseases movement, you need to start the boycott junk food movement, the Satyagraha movement with Ahimsa, the Swadeshi movement by local and organic, the Dandi March, be fit and move out, keep moving, just do it, 
and the non-cooperation movement, which is the most, most important movement. And if you remember, that was one of the key uh, game changers to get us independence. So if you want independence from disease, definitely start with the non-cooperation movement for sure. And if you do decide to go on this path, not only are you going to be helping all those animals, but you're going to be helping your health and the planet too. Because each day a vegan choice saves 1100 gallons of water. You know, animal agriculture is the biggest cause of climate change, is the biggest cause, and we don't even realize it. 20 pounds of less carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, one day of vegan choice. Um, sorry, I can't see that. What? 45 pounds of grain you save when you start being a vegan. 30 square feet of forest and one animal life a day. In fact, the United Nations have said, if we want to reverse climate change, we need to start thinking about our choices. Corona has not happened just for any reason. It's nature's way of waking us up, of giving us a pause, of making us think, where are we heading to? Let's meet some other Gandhijis. Hi, I'm Dr. Satchita Bhattacharya and I'm a holistic health physician. Hi, I'm Dr. Pinky Thakur. I'm a practicing gastrointestinal and laparoscopic surgeon at the Hospital Thakur. I'm Dr. Tejasvi and I attended the seminar today conducted by Shadam. I have been an allopathic doctor, but uh, because of some challenges in the family, I realized that medicine is really not the way to get rid of your chronic lifestyle diseases. I was leading towards uh, osteoporosis, and after stopping all the milk products and dairy products, I have seen a remarkable change in my health. Over a period of years, I realized diet plays a major role in most diseases. So if we correct our diet, we can cure or help in healing many, many diseases especially the lifestyle diseases. One of my friends introduced me to Sharon and today I attended this program. It was an eye-opener for many things. I have a mind block. Yeah, and uh, the seminar has been just excellent. Uh, we've got a lot of info inputs, very, very important inputs, which has, again, reinforced in me the need to actually uh, make my patients work towards a vegan life and uh, personally I, we have benefited my husband uh, is a diabetic but he has been able to get off a lot of his medicines because of a vegan diet I'm also a vegan now and we are trying to convert the whole family into vegan because it's, it's really the way to live a healthy life I would advise as a doctor to everybody to go ahead with this diet Today I can believe that medicines are not required to cure. It's only food which will cure. We'll be going for it and definitely try to deliver at least 100% if not 110%. The food that has been served was awesome, just awesome. I mean oil-free cooking can be so good, you can't imagine this well without tasting the food that was served here. Wonderful. Even the main uh, mind block on which was uh, the curds. I love curds and pali. Right. So after having the raita today, which looked as good as normal dahi raita. Correct. So right. I'm definitely going to go for this. And overall you feel much more composed and satisfied with your own self. Temperament is better. So, and it's basically you feel love and compassion for the other living. So I'm really glad I made the attempt to come here, learn so much more, more from Dr. Nandita Shah. She's an amazing person who has gone through and done so much and is doing so much for the world uh, so that people can lead a healthier life. See, so many doctors, these are doctors telling you you don't need medicines. And it's really not their fault because in four years of medical school, there is only two hours of nutrition that is taught. So even doctors really are not, many doctors are really not aware because they are not taught. You know, everything we have, but if we don't have health, it is our real wealth. That's what Mahatma Gandhi told us. It is health that is our real wealth. 
and not pieces of silver and gold. So are you ready to join the quit disease movement with us? Are you ready?